And first of all, thank you very much for joining us here. We have over 200 participants with a wide variety of backgrounds. We have so many people from around the globe and with different perspectives and from different institutions, private sector, governments, um, civil society, scientists, and that makes a very lively debate, which I really enjoy and which really brings us forward in the thinking of climate crisis and biodiversity. An event like that one is absolutely important. Do you really believe that we make it? In view of the situation and the view of the scarce time, in view of the challenges and the trade-offs? And my answer is, of course, yes, we can. Yeah. We can do it if we start, finally. Yes, we can do it, but it is really time to go for it. The biodiversity crisis is, if anything, an even larger threat to human well-being and stability on Earth than the climate crisis. And the climate crisis is so fundamental. The science can say two things with quite high degree of scientific evidence. Number one, we are at risk of destabilizing the entire Earth system. The number two is that this requires exponential transformative change because we are at an urgency point. It has taken the climate scientists 30, 40 years uh, to reach that headline level. And now we have to be really clever so that people really know how severe the biodiversity crisis is. In the order of 70 to 80 percent of the biodiversity on Earth is actually held, or let's say, within the, within the community ranges of, of the indigenous communities in the world that represents less than 5 percent of world population. We are also ensuring biodiversity and we are ensuring livelihood for our people. We are ensuring that we're able to govern our resources well, not only for us, but for humanity. These are the remaining biodiversity in the world, so we are an indispensable partner and actor for uh, conservation of uh, the remaining biodiversity, but also for providing real solutions to climate change. An important element is the global vision. To hear uh, someone from the Philippines uh, from with indigenous background, it's very important, and at the same time, to have the scientists and to have people from finance. And this is a type of cross-fertilization which is very useful. Well, the relevance of the interlinkages between biodiversity crisis and uh, climate crisis is more and more understood also in, in the political uh, arena. Yes, we can do there something for financing, but to change uh, forestry to sustainability, agriculture to sustainability, fisheries to sustainability, we need politics. We need politics in the right framework, and that's what we are advocating for. Well, international co collaboration is absolutely necessary. I mean, I even talk of, of nature as, as global commons, meaning that these are, these are systems that we all depend on. We are essentially uh, all dependent on a stable Amazon rainforest, or a stable Congo rainforest, or stable permafrost in the Arctic, because they regulate the, the livability and the stability of the whole planet. We must mind environment, and this we must be together. We are experiencing more than two crises. If you look at the climate changes, the geopolitical uncertainties, the changes in nature, and also the digitalization of our societies, and in all these crises you have lots of uh, potential financial risks, you may also have financial opportunities. We are the largest bilateral development agencies in terms of projects in biodiversity. More than 3 billion euros so far, more than 800 projects and, and, and national parks we, we support. But it's not enough, that's obvious. So we really like to do more on that. We like to bring up more financing volumes, but even more importantly, we are about to design different instruments that include the private sector and the government side, the public fund, the partner countries, really to make the best out of the opportunities we got.